Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the studio. Um, first of all, uh, thank you to everybody who headed over to Patreon last week and um, subscribed to the channel there. Um, there won't be a video next week on YouTube, but there'll be an exclusive new painting for Patreon uh, viewers only. So if you want to see what that looks like, please head on over there. There's also some live streams on there and um, Q and A's and behind the scenes footage. And also I've got the giveaway for the apron. Maybe I'll reduce the amount to 200 followers, but we'll see. Um, we are back on with the doctor today, part two. Um, I've been in touch with the client. I've told them how much historical restoration work there is on there. Um, so we are back on with him today and we're going to carry on cleaning and see what we discover. Hopefully there are not too many more surprises, but we will see. Okay, let's get back on him. So last week we found our solution that worked at removing the varnish and we discovered that there was quite a bit of overpaint on here uh, hiding crackler uh, from the age of the painting. So I'm just doing uh, this section here now just taking that varnish off and you can see straight away that the colour coming through is a lot clearer and cooler with that discoloured varnish removing. And then this book here, I'm going to have a look at this book at some point. It says Hippoc on there, which is a reference to Hippocrates. And then there seems to be a monogram on there. I don't know if that's a, a W or an M. And I imagine that Hippoc is, I don't know if that's sticking out of the sticking out of the book as a, as a bookmark even. I'm not too sure. So I've taken that same mixture, which was just removing varnish from that section, and I'm taking it over to the hand and... Straight away you can see there that overpaint is removing and it's hiding this thumb. It's gone over the top of the thumb and if you just watch as I clean, that just waltzes off. So that is really fresh paint that's been added at some point. But the actual thumb composition changes here and looks a little bit stumpy and a little bit ugly. Now I don't know if this hand was unfinished. I don't know if it was just blocked in by an assistant i'm not entirely sure but there is definitely something going on there where it's been modified or changed in the past or someone wasn't quite happy with how that thumb looked i'm not too sure this portrait could have been part finished by the master and then taken on by an apprentice or a studio artist for completion but there's something funny about this hand it was mentioned on the label at the back of the painting now I don't think it's been repainted. I think it's been unfinished and then overpainted to try and tidy it up because this same solution, which is pretty weak, is just removing the varnish off those flesh tones. It's not taking off any of those little white shadows in the burnt siennas and the uh, Indian reds. So I think this is as it was. As mentioned last week, to keep this channel going and supported, I need more Patreons. Each video takes me over a week to prepare, um, to edit, shoot, film. And to do this, it takes me away from my regular work. If I get up to, let's reduce it to 200 Patreons, I'm currently at 50, we will do our apron draw. I forgot to mention, you will get a color choice. This is the second one that I've got ready to go. It's a lovely colour. If you want to take part and have a go to a free option to win this apron, please head over to Aprion, Aprion, <laughs> Patreon. The link is in the bio below. Not only is there the giveaway, there is an exclusive video this week on Patreon only by an artist called Henry Liversiege, and this is the portrait of Mrs. Calvert. So head over to Patreon, join the community, and I look forward to seeing you over there. Okay, guys, let's carry on. So a master would go out to visit a client. So John Riley would go out and visit a client and he would just take a prepared canvas, sketch in the face, put some details of um, clothing, placement of the hand, and here you can see placement of the wig. And then it would be passed over to one of his studio assistants to complete the rest of the painting. So once this stage was complete and he was happy with how the face was rendered, he would then pass it down to one of his assistants that would work on the background, might work on smaller details and accessories like the gloves and the draperies that are used. Um, but I do think that may be the case with this painting here. 
I think the artist may have struggled with placement of the hand as there does seem to be quite a few adjustments with the thumb and the foreshortening. What do we know about John Riley? He was born in 1646 in London to William Riley. He was Lancaster Herald and keeper of the records in the Tower of London. The Heralds were in charge of all matters of heraldry for the Sovereign, including coronations, state funerals and the opening of the Houses of Parliament. The family were well connected and William was present at the proclamation of Charles II after the failed Republic period. A young John Riley studied under Isaac Fuller and Gerard Soest, and although his portraits were noteworthy, he didn't get any real traction until the death of Sir Peter Lely, who was the dominant court portrait painter. When courtier and royal official Thomas Chiffinch sat for him and was so much pleased with his portrait that he showed it to the king. Charles II gave Riley some commissions and eventually himself sat for him, apparently saying of the result, Is this like me? Odds fish, then I am an ugly fellow. Odds fish was the favourite exclamation of King Charles II. It's a minced oath for God's face. On the accession of William III and Mary II, he was appointed principal painter in ordinary, jointly with Sir Godfrey Neller, though he only survived for three years after this. Riley was a quiet and modest man, probably stemming from his father's bureaucratic role within the College of Arms. He painted unusually portraits of servants, again aware of the workings of the courts and the mechanics of how it held together. He was also assisted in painting with his draperies and accessories by one John Fosterman. Riley would paint the heads and John Closterman the draperies. John Closterman, son of a painter, studied in Paris with Henry Tiburin for two years under Francois de Troyes. He eventually settled in London in 1681. At first he painted drapery for Riley and then progressed to portraits of his own. So looking at this portrait, the hand looks like it floats on the picture and the head, as we know, is of a certain quality. But now I'm drawn to these drapes. I'm looking at the the fabric, how it's been rendered, the high sheen. Um, and I've started to look into John Klosterman and the style that he used in his paintings. So here we have a selection of portraits by John Riley, ordered by date. So these are a lot of his early portraits that are attributed to him. And they all have the same kind of look to them. They, they do have some drapery, but this is the first one where he actually is working with John Klosterman. And look how suddenly the portraits change to be all about the fabric and the clothing. High silk sheen fabrics. And then this is the portrait of William Chiffinch. Um, this is the one that got William Riley the commissions with the king. And it's the fabric, the, the sheen of the fabric, which makes these paintings by Klosterman and Riley stand out. The fabulous fabric that is everyone's draped. If you look at all these portraits, they're all draped in the most wonderful fabrics. And I think this is what gave Riley his edge, especially this one of Christopher Wren. The fabric here and the tones and the palette used is very similar to Our Doctor. If you look at the way the fabric's been rendered, his cravat, the only thing different is the hands. The hands aren't as finished on our portraits as they are on these. But I do think that this is a Riley portrait with Klosterman helping on the fabrics. So when we clean the rest of this portrait, we'll look at the fabric, the, this kind of, I don't know if it's silk or not, but there is a high sheen to it. And I think you'll see the reference that I'm trying to make. So you can see now that I've got the underpainting showing through there, there's something going on with that thumb. It doesn't look quite right. And that may well have been why it was overpainted. I'm removing this yellowed varnish off the um, silk gown now, and you can start to see the true colors coming through. Here are the repairs that are um, revealing. I think this portrait may have been rolled at some point before it was lined. It's got a lot of horizontal cracking to it. Um, there's parts that just look like they've been added to. And there's definitely been some compositional errors with that hand placement at some point. 
that have been adjusted. So now I've been working on the background area of this painting and this, the, these are the stretcher mark uh, damage along the um, right hand edge. So you could see these before I even started cleaning and this is just over paint removing from those filled areas. So when a painting is badly tensioned and rests on the stretcher bars, it forms weaknesses, paint begins to remove and chip off and these will be filled. So this is me just cleaning the varnish but as the varnish is cleaning off, the overpaint's cleaning off too. And you can see there that these darker areas are just covering um, past restorations. And you see the filler start to come through. And again, this area is quite extensive. All those areas there on the right in the kind of yellowy gold are filled areas. And there's just swathes of brown overpaint and discolored varnish removing. Um, it's quite a laborious task, this. You can also see the kind of orange peel surface texture which would indicate that it's hung over a fire or an open fire with some heat for some time as well and this can separate the paint and require overpainting too. Hi guys, um, I've just spent hours cleaning this painting and it's been really quite dull because it's just removing brown paint and varnish and then have you just seen what appeared at the top of that painting and it took me a minute to realise what I think it is but let me just flip you over. So I think this painting has been extended. So I think this line is extra canvas has been added to make it fit this stretcher. Because all this bears no relation to this painting here and it stops dead on that line. If you look here, you've got like a, a, a cut canvas edge. Ah, sorry. That to me looks like it's been torn or cut smoothly and then glued and attached and filled. Because that does not carry on through there. Anyway, interesting. So yeah, I've never had anything like that before where that result is so dramatic, as you can see there. Uh, I'm going to carry on and see what else reveals, but I do feel like this canvas probably been enlarged at some point and then for some whatever reason, a random piece of painting or old piece of canvas has been attached just to extend it. But yeah, interesting. All right, cool. This is the top edge again, but further down, and you can just see how quickly that paint waltzes off. Um, I was so shocked when this came through. I was like, what is this? I, this bears no relation. And I thought there might be a, a, a huge background behind this picture or some kind of uh, landscape elements, but it just turned out to be this extender piece that had been cut from another canvas and attached to this painting. Now, portraits in, in those days were kind of standard sizes. They'd be around... 102 centimeters by 127 centimeters um, but this one for some reason the stretcher had been made four centimeters longer so this is 130 by 104 now whether this was just an error by the stretcher maker coolings on the back i don't really know but or maybe it was a stretcher they had lying around but to cut this strip from another painting and then attach it to get the fill level the same is just quite extraordinary and now i'm even more intrigued to find out what piece of painting this was taken from the colors suggest some kind of regal gown or some royal gown look at the brocade there so what painting was this strip taken from to be cut off to be attached to our doctor i mean it's quite unbelievable really so here you can see um across the top there i'm about uh three quarters of the way through and that's it all the way through so you I've still got the wig to clean the face to clean you can see the varnish that's still on there you can see how much damage there is to this painting it's certainly been through the wars it's certainly been neglected um, I'm not too sure when it was relined it may have been relined a couple of times and again you can see elements of the paint that's kind of been removed in the past and then been added on but there are elements of greatness here that fabric the silk the sheen to it is is wonderfully executed uh, and i can't wait to get started on that wig and face right guys i think we're going to leave that there for today um i am going to get in touch with my clients again and see what they want to do with the extender piece that we've discovered on the top of the painting and just show them what we've discovered um, i'll also be doing some more research into the artist and see if we can make any more links between john klosterman and John Riley. I'll see if there's uh, any evidence of Nella in there. So I'll be doing a little bit more research on that this week as well. So um, 
just to say thanks again for watching. Please hit like and subscribe because it does share this video to more and more people across YouTube and it'll grow the channel and help me keep going. Um, and also remember next week's video will be on Patreon exclusive and uh, we will be back on YouTube with the doctor probably the week after. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. Weather is pretty grim really out there. So um, stay safe. I don't say stay safe. Why am I saying stay safe? So weather is pretty grim out there. Um, have a good week and I will see you all soon. Okay, cheers guys. Bye.